Hello and welcome! Today we're taking a look at the Halo Infinite Skiff Intercept from Mega Constructs. We'll take a look at what you get, as well as the pros and cons of using it for stop motion. The set officially retails for $39.99, or about £29.99. But as usual, the prices do vary depending on where you look. The figures for this set include a fully articulated metallic green Spartan, wearing completely Mark VII armour. This is a really default looking Spartan, especially with the classic green colour. Then there's two banished brutes. They each come with one shoulder pad and one right thigh piece. As I mentioned way back in my ghost review, the torso armour of these brutes have a tendency to slide around which can make animating with them a little tedious, and their helmet also has a bit of a give to it. Lastly, the set comes with a red grunt, with exactly the same style as all of the other infinite grunts so far. The set comes with a grey shock rifle, a black bulldog, a purple plasma pistol, and two brown manglers. With the manglers, it might just be mine, but the separate little ammo drum feels way more secure in these ones than on previous ones I've had. I think that's a good thing, because it's less chance of losing something so small, and, and who really removes them? Unless you are trying to animate someone reloading. When it comes to the shock rifle, someone pointed out that a slightly annoying thing is that the blades around the grip stop it from being held at certain angles. Not a massive problem but it just means it's a little more fiddly than the other weapons. Also included are three translucent pegs for shooting out of the turret, and four brown bases for the figures. And there's also a brick separator. Now for some reason, the set also comes with a little bag containing two spare brute heads. And I'm definitely not the only person to get this, I I've seen a lot of reviewers talk about this. Now I'm not really sure what prompted Mega Constructs to do this, but I don't know, may maybe it means something deeper. Like Mega Constructs are trying to say something with it. Like no matter what armour you might wear on the outside, no matter what differences we all have, maybe, well, maybe we're all a little Craig on the inside. Or, you know, maybe it was just like a manufacturing error. Either way, more Craig! This is the Banished Skiff. A transport vehicle fairly similar in function to the Halo 3 Prowler, or the troop version of the Halo 2 Shadow. There's a forward turret which swivels around 180 degrees and seats one brute, and there's a driver's seat at the back which also seats one brute. The driver's seat has some flexibility to it, but isn't really meant to move around. There's some really nice extra detailing on two of the pieces to show that it's a control panel. In the middle of the vehicle, there's an open area with room for troops to stand. As pointed out, just having a grunt standing there still leaves the troop area looking a little empty, so it's definitely intended for you to mix in some troops from other sets if you want to pack them all in. The bars that go over the troop bay don't leave much headroom for taller figures like brutes, so you'll have to stand them in the middle where there's an open roof. The angles that the designers have managed to achieve with various pieces fits the banished aesthetic perfectly, and it's great that they've managed to do this without custom moulded pieces like on the banished Ghost and Banshee. There's also a few pre-printed decals on certain pieces, like these yellow stripes, which add some detail. And there's these battle damage decals too. Detail is definitely the word for this build. Look at how much these small parts add to the overall look of the engine. The turret has a firing feature when you press down on this little bit at the back. There's also a spot on each side of the skiff to hold the spare firing pegs. And you can move a few of the fins and grav plates at the back. 
Underneath the vehicle, there's five transparent smooth pieces, so it looks like the vehicle is hovering. For stop motion, you can either replace these with bricks if you want the vehicle to stay solid on a base plate, or use sticky tack. That's what I did for animating on a smooth surface like this. At the very back, there's what I presume is a thruster. This can turn, and it's connected to an axle which runs underneath and turns the turret at the front. Now, this is a neat little feature. But because of all the axles, there's a lot of play in the mechanism. Here I sticky tack the thruster so it wouldn't move, but there's still this much play in the turret. For stop motion, even if you stop the rear thruster from turning, it's really hard to keep the turret still, and it'll spin around a bit while you're moving the vehicle about. Even though spinning the turret using the mechanism wasn't that smooth in real life, it wasn't too bad when I animated with it. I was still able to get some smooth motion out of it. But it's super easy to accidentally knock the mechanism or turret and have it move when you don't want it to. And that's not even the biggest thing. There's nothing for the turret operator to grab, so they're just left to shake loosely around the cylinder. So definitely very hard to animate with that and keep it still. One thing I'm not so keen on, that other people have mentioned, is how plain the back of the cylinder is. With so much block work at the front, it just makes this part look unfinished. As of making this video, we haven't actually seen the skiff in Infinite yet, so this could be what it looks like. The frame of the vehicle has a curved shape, which looks very unique. But it's achieved through ball joints, and while they are fairly strong, it still leaves it open to bending if you put too much force on it. And it also means they can be rotated. I am impressed with how sturdy the base of the model is, but areas like all the joints means that I wouldn't imagine this set standing up to rough play from younger kids. And it's also loads of areas that could move or break while animators are trying to use it. I don't normally talk about packaging in these reviews, but it's really nice that all the bags are numbered and the build goes together in stages, so you don't have to open all the bags at first and then spend more time searching through all the pieces. I'm actually really glad someone else said that they found the build a little complicated, because when I was building it, I found it weirdly time consuming to put together, considering it's so hollow. It doesn't look like a massive build, but there's loads of little tedious bits, which all add to detail in the end, but it took me a couple of hours longer than I thought it would have. There's a couple of quite unique specialist pieces in this set, but they still find a way to be used in the alternate build. Speaking of alternate builds, the skiff can instead be built into a defensive wall with a turret, and a four-legged mech. Now the mech doesn't have any official name on the box or in the instructions, or anywhere that I can find. However, to me, it looks like it was completely inspired by a skitterer from Halo Wars 2. These little machines can be made when playing as the DLC leader, Colony, and they're driven by Legolo worms, the same worms that make up hunters. They skitter around extremely fast and fire energy beams. They're about the size of a brute, and they're pretty weak, but they make up for it in numbers. So, I'm just going to refer to this as a skitterer, because that's what I think it's meant to be. But the size is the biggest difference. It towers over a Spartan. The cockpit can open up, and one of the brutes can be sat inside. The joints for this cockpit aren't very strong, so to animate this opening and closing, I had to support the canopy with bricks for each photo. There's a few movable details, like these front mandible looking things, and the guns on top can spin 360 degrees. For being completely built out of the skiff parts, the skitter is actually quite a neat and compact build. I think my only complaint is the legs. You may notice in the intro animation that I barely animated and moved the skitterer. That's because it's a giant pain. The legs are so thin and stubby that you'd absolutely need an animation rig to hold it up and make it walk properly. Its legs can just about hold up its own weight so there's no way it could stay up on two legs at a time by itself in a walk cycle. The wall is quite a straightforward piece. It's not made of many parts, but tries to build up lots of layers in order to make it look more 3D. 
It does have a little turret on the top which can swivel around, and you can turn it using a little cog on the back. It's pretty tall compared to a figure. I really like these bits of terrain as alternate builds, because I think terrain and bases are something that's often overlooked. It's weird how the skiff doesn't seem like it's made of a lot of parts, but then when you break it down, you can create both of these alternate builds at the same time. Normally for these reviews, I build the vehicle's alternate build first so that I can film it, and then rebuild it into the proper main vehicle so I can keep it like that on my shelf or whatever. But with this one, I actually built the skiff first and then rebuilt it and kept the alternate build because I like it so much. The default Spartan is really nice and could definitely still be a spare figure for conversions and armour swaps if you're into that. And it's a great way of getting some more generic banished figures too. The skiff itself is really detailed and it's a cool transport vehicle. As a display piece, I think it looks really good. Aside from the couple of issues I mentioned about the turret mechanism and the weakness of certain joints, it's fairly decent for animation. But as a toy, I don't think it would stand up to rough play, and there's not many places to easily hold it without some parts bending or breaking off, so you may have to be gentler with it than other sets. In my opinion, the alternate build is unique and good enough that if you aren't massively taken by the skiff, the skitterer and the turret wall are still decent options and worth considering. I think they're some of the best alternate builds out there, because they actually feel like things from Halo, and not, you know, a jet bike. So what do you think? If there's anything you think I've missed, please let me and everyone else know in the comments. Before a review goes up, I make a YouTube community post showing which set I'll be reviewing next and asking for your thoughts on the set. So definitely keep an eye out for those and thanks for everyone's feedback and opinions on this set. Thanks for watching and take care.